how many wildfires are burning in New Mexico right now? And what's the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services' new climate pledge? Welcome to the Climate Recap from the Becosphere Climate Corner, your go-to place for international and U.S.-based climate news. I'm Becky Hogue, a science writer. Today is Tuesday, April 26th. Let's jump right into the news you need to start your day. Let's start with some climate events. A new disease called the stony coral tissue loss disease has begun sweeping through the Caribbean coral population faster than scientists have ever seen before. We're talking a mile a month. The disease was first discovered in Florida in 2014, and scientists believed it hitched a ride on ocean currents and commercial ships. The disease afflicts more than 20 coral species, some of which are the most important for reef building. Reefs can take centuries to build, but they are biodiversity hubs that can protect the local coastline from storm surges while providing them economic opportunities like fishing and tourism. There's no clear connection between this disease and climate change, but warmer waters can make diseases spread faster and weakens coral's immune system. In August of 2021, Puerto Rico declared a state of emergency over it. On land, wildfires are sweeping through New Mexico, Nebraska, and Arizona right now. Two wildfires in New Mexico, the Calf Canyon Fire and the Hermit's Peak Fire, have merged into one. 16 of New Mexico's 33 counties are battling flames, with there being 20 wildfires in all right now. Now let's look at a climate study. A new research article published in the journal Climate Policy looks at scenarios for reducing climate change impacts without carbon removal technology. Carbon removal technology is still largely unproven, so this makes sense. It would basically entail having 2019 level emissions by 2030 to keep warming below 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels. Zero or net zero emissions by 2050. The study found that high-income communities will need to foster degrowth, meaning they'll have to reduce their economies instead of continuing to prioritize growth. Policies that drive socioeconomic and technological change can reduce emissions by 75% by 2050. Now on to some climate victories, starting with a few more stories from Earth Day weekend. Extinction Rebellion activists protested outside the London office of the asset management firm Vanguard, lighting flares and setting up deck chairs. They want Vanguard to stop funding industries driving human rights abuses and start using their massive shareholdings to boost climate action. Meanwhile, activists from the climate group Green New Deal ambushed a business and energy secretary while he was walking to his car, asking him to oppose new fossil fuel projects. He didn't respond, but hours later he supported BP announcing it would develop the Merlatch oil and gas field in the North Sea. So I guess that answers that. In Germany, over 2,000 have inhabited a city meant to be demolished to expand a nearby coal mine. The village is west of Cologne, and protests have remained peaceful. Due to an increased cost of petrol, driving an electric car is actually 600 pounds less a year than driving a gas-powered one, according to Compare the Market. Though running either kind of vehicle right now is more markedly expensive. Over in the U.S., Pennsylvania's governor announced he will soon enact a carbon pricing policy. As part of it, Pennsylvania will join the Regional Greenhouse Gas Initiative with Connecticut, Delaware, Maine, Maryland, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New York, Rhode Island, Vermont, and Virginia. The initiative sets a price and declining limits for emissions. Any power plant with a capacity of 25 megawatts or more must buy a credit for every ton of CO2 emitted. Lastly, the Department of Health and Human Services unveiled a pledge for hospitals, health systems, suppliers, pharmaceutical companies, and others in the industry to sign and commit to the same level of emissions reduction as the federal government. That would be 50% by 2030 and net zero by 2050. Signatories will be honored in a ceremony in June. The health sector contributes to 8.5% of the country's emissions. And that was your climate news for Tuesday, April 26th. If you like the work I do, please follow this podcast, give it a five-star rating, leave a review, and consider checking out the Becosphere Climate Corner YouTube channel. Remember to talk about the climate crisis every single day and to support your local news organizations. Bye for now.